all good things, I guess, must come to an end, unfortunately. It's, it's just so sad knowing that what we're about to embark on once again is truly awful. We have truly been, I guess you can say, I wouldn't even say spoiled because we, we didn't really have that much time to really enjoy Triple H or Triple H's era in creative control solely being the one making the decisions for the most part. When he started up around SummerSlam after Vince McMahon retired, you felt something different. You knew something was going to be different. And granted, that show had already been pretty much booked but it still felt different. And even the Monday Night Raws felt a little bit different. Granted, they weren't always great. There were some good ones. There were some some bad ones. Some, a lot of the time, they were middle of the road. But you still knew that the pay-per-views or the PLE events were always going to be something worth watching. And we haven't felt like that in quite some time in the Vince McMahon era. A lot of times the shows were lackluster and the pay-per-views itself most of the time were lackluster. Maybe one or two matches were worth checking out. Everything else was lackluster. But at least in the Triple H era, the pay-per-views, the PLE events felt important. Shows were getting sold out four or five months in advance. In the Vince McMahon era, they were having a tough time selling out some of the marquee shows. The marquee events. I should let you know something. People had this excitement to check out WWE again. And once again, I'm not going to sit up here and say everything was perfect in the Triple H era. No, it wasn't. There were some, some questionable decisions. But for the most part, you still had something to really look forward to when it came to creative. This past Monday Night Raw, the Raw After Mania, without a doubt, will go down as one of the worst Raws After Manias I have ever seen in my life. I believe it's one of the lowest rated Raw Monday Night Raws ever. You can just tell something wasn't right here. And then, obviously, with the reports of the WWE merger with UFC and being bought by Endeavor (laughs) and Vince McMahon going on live television with his new porn stash that he got pretty much talking about he's you know going to be back well he's back in head of creative but he won't be you know messing with it too much that's essentially what he was saying but if you know anything about Vince that's BS And what we saw last night for Monday Night Raw just lets you know how much BS that is. He is back as pretty much head of creative. Triple H may have that title, but Vince McMahon has to say so. Before, it was Triple H has the title and he has the final say so. Now, Triple H has the title of head of creative really But we know who's running it. And last night, you saw who was running it. That first hour was probably the best hour of the show. And even then, you saw the Vince McMahon-isms. Why are we starting after the promo segment with Cody and Roman and, and even Triple H? Even when he came out there, starting off the show. It was like damn near a farewell, a farewell speech. Like, hey man. We're still WWE. I love you guys. I love the production team. I love, like, it was like he was saying his goodbyes. Some were, you know, taking it as him, you know, trying to ease the fans on the decision of Cody Rhodes not winning at WrestleMania. But that's neither here nor there. It definitely looked like a farewell speech. You go from that to starting to show off with Omos squashing Elias. That's what we're doing to start off. 
Monday Night Raw. The Raw after Mania. The reset. This is usually the reset episode going forward. You literally came from one of your best WrestleManias to your one of your worst Monday Night Raws in less than 24 hours. After the big news of WWE's merger and being bought out. There were images floating around. People, or I guess they were sitting behind the production crew or whatnot, and they were getting scripts bef- like two minutes before the show and during the show. Rewrites. What does that sound like? It sounds like a Vince McMahon thing. Not saying Triple H didn't have probably rewrites every now and then, but whole shows, whole scripts being rewritten. Apparently, the rumor was Triple H wanted to crown a new number one contender for Bianca's title so they were going to have a, a women's tournament to crown a new number one contender we probably was going to maybe see some NXT call ups potentially but they cancelled all that to have Rhea Ripley come out there with her title to set up some type of match that honestly we probably not going to see for quite some time and then obviously they weren't going to unify the titles so that we've been there done that So it was kind of a cool moment, but at the same time, I think having more wrestling and promoting potentially some new call-ups, new stars, that could be cool to see who's going to face Bianca going forward. I don't know. Then the whole Seth Rollins situation. Seth Rollins comes out there. It seemed like he was about to cut a promo. We come back. We come back from the Seth Rollins, uh, you know, entrance from commercial break. And he's leaving the ring. And he's walking out. Now there's footage of people recording at the show. Apparently, some people came up to him. You know what I'm saying? Some people came up to him and basically told him that they changed the script. So your segment is pretty much going to be over. So if you didn't see that at home, which most of us didn't, we didn't know what the hell <clears throat> was going on. So we're thinking, what? that was a waste of time. What was that segment? That's some Vince McMahonisms right there. Confusion. Like, I just, I don't get it. Why? You could have potentially had a, someone being called up from NXT or whoever, a new surprise for Seth Rollins to eventually, you know, feud with. And then let's not even get on the whole Matt Riddle situation. Matt Riddle comes back. And now he's in a feud with Miz. So next week, him and Miz are supposed to have a match. Does anyone care about that? Is anyone going to want to watch that match? I can tell you this, no. So, this show was just completely damn near rewritten. Whatever Triple H had in mind, Vince said, nah, let's do this. And his idea literally was awful. I don't even know what to say. Let's not even talk about that women's number one contendership match for the women's tag titles. Didn't Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey win their match to be the number one contenders for the title? At WrestleMania? Now, we didn't get no indication that Shayna was injured. She may have been injured, but no one knew because no one said anything. So now they're not in the match. And the people that lost at WrestleMania in Liv and Raquel, they were put into this match. And now they're facing, they're the number one contenders for the women tag titles. How does that make sense? I'm so confused. The only entertaining thing towards the end of that damn show was the whole Brock Lesnar destroying Cody Rose. That was entertaining as hell. Shocked a lot of people. But once again, we've been down this story before. It's literally beat for beat John Cena when he lost to The Rock to the next night on Monday Night Raw, a much better Monday Night Raw after Mania. Brock Lesnar returns, F5s him. And then they set up a match for the next pay-per-view. And I think that's what they're doing here. Now, granted... I am very intrigued to see what they do here. This is his 
redemption arc. This is his struggle arc. He's going to have to go through something. But I think it would have been cooler for him to try to do what he can to go through the bloodline. Continue that. Because that's his real issue is with the bloodline. And them cheating once again and stopping Cody from finishing his story. Now that we had this attack, Roman's not going to be a backlash. We don't even know when we're going to see Roman again. I, I want y'all to understand the titles that will be held hostage once again. <clears throat> Here's the thing. I've, I have been a big fan of Roman Reigns' title reign. And I'm probably going to make a separate video talking about this. Because I definitely want to talk about this. So I'm not going to go into great detail. But. Me, in my opinion. Cody continuing the story through Roman is fine. I would prefer that. Because at least you would see Roman a little bit more on television. Instead of. Brock and Cody. Which. I still think that could be really fresh and I think it can be good and I'm not tripping over it but we've seen the storyline before so I'm not tripping over it but we know Vince loves some Brock and I think they're going to do really well I think their match is going to be entertaining as hell hopefully the right person win and Cody overcomes Brock but I, I have to be honest here this is another way just to keep Roman you know to accommodate Roman's schedule. So we won't see the titles. We don't know when we're going to see them again. Hopefully see them on SmackDown. But who knows. And then after that we, we may not see them again. For a very long time. So I don't know. But I'm definitely going to talk about that. Um, but outside of that. You can tell this is, this is all Vince. Monday Night Raw. Was awful. It was not that good. At all. Outside of the, the tag team championship match between Street Profits and uh, Ken, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, which was fucking great. And the opening segment and the ending segment with Cody getting eviscerated. That's about it. That's it. Vince is back, y'all. Now, I don't know how much control he's going to have on SmackDown. I think Triple H may have a little bit more control on SmackDown. And SmackDown has been consistently the better show because it's just two hours. It's easier to digest. Um, so maybe that's something we could possibly look forward to. Him having a little bit more control on SmackDown. But honestly, we're doomed. <laughs> we're doomed, y'all. It was fun while it lasted. He is back. And if you don't believe he's back, you look at that show last night. You look at the scripts being rewritten before the show, right before the show and during the show. You look at everything that happened last night. Come on now. Come on now. There's no denying it. He said it himself. He just tried to make it spin, spin it as, like, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, I'm back in creative, but, you know, I'm not going to be doing all the heavy lifting. We know what the deal is, Vince. <sighs> he is, he is the villain, bro. He's the ultimate villain. He got the villain porn stash. He's, he is in his final form, and there's nothing we can do about it. So. Ah, man, this this is just uh, a tough video to make. Comment down below. Let me know how you guys feeling about Vince pretty much being back in control again. How was y'all feeling about this whole Monday Night Raw after Mania? Like, what? How did y'all feel about the show? Because, uh, yeah, it just it was it just wasn't good. And where do you guys think? <laughs> Uh, the future of WWE is heading. Oh, we're going to go back to how it once was when Vince was pretty much bombing the shows weekly and the pay-per-views or PLEs didn't really matter no more. Or will it just be, you know, you know, more or less the same? 
maybe the shows or you know well i don't know i can't even say that it's not gonna be more or less the same because vince is gonna be in control so i honestly i kind of answered my question there i guess will the shows go back to what they were when vince was around probably so will the ple's go back to the way they were when vince were around was around probably so what do we do y'all i don't even know what type of question to ask y'all next i don't know what what do we do Comment down below, let me know. I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 150K. Still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next week. This is awful.